All right, so welcome back. We're just going to do a quick and dirty table view controller. So I've called it my student table view controller. If you remember from previous videos, uh, we set up uh, this bottom view controller to be uh, of type student table view controller. Uh, here's that connection if you want to see it again. Declutter my various windows. So if I click on the, the view controller for this guy, you can see he's a student table view controller. Actually, while we're over here in the storyboard, there's one more thing that we're going to need to do, and that's we're going to need to make a, a prototype cell. So here's my first uh, cell. You can see that it uh, is selected in the outline view and then also here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to set it to just be a basic style, which just gives me a single word, and I'm going to give it an identifier of student cell. So that name student cell, I'll have to remember that when I go to my code because that's how I'm going to connect to uh, that prototype cell. We'll go over table views in great gory detail. I just kind of want to give you a preview of how some of this stuff works. So if I come over into my code here, I actually don't need to make any action or outlet connections uh, because I'm a table view controller and he's going to be asking me uh, for information. So what I'm going to do is I've kind of got an array on my clipboard here. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to fill it in with these, these values from this array. So these are just names of students that are in the class. So in order to actually make things happen with that table view, I'm a delegate to him, and what I have to do is I have to override certain methods. So he's going to be asking me questions like number of rows and components, uh, number of rows in selection, that's the one I'm actually for. So he's going to ask me how many rows are there, and I'm going to respond with uh, the number of rows is equal to students count. Uh, oops, it's telling me I actually meant to say return because I need to return that value. So I'm going to go ahead and do that, return the student count. Uh, the next question it's going to also want to ask me is it's want, going to want to get a cell. So I'm going to have to override cell for row at index path. Uh, we'll talk a lot about the details on these things. But what I want to do is I want to uh, DQ a reusable cell with an identifier. Uh, and I'm going to DQ that student cell. Uh, and then the for index path is just uh, the variable that was passed in called index path. Uh, that gives you an any object, so again, you have to cast it uh, to the right type of object, so you want to cast it to uh, a UI table view cell. You notice that casting in Swift is a little different than some other languages, and that you say as, and then you say what the type is. Ultimately, we're going to be returning the cell uh, from the function, but before we return it, what we want to do is we want to set the text on the, the text label. So we've got a text label text. Uh, and what we want to do is we want to set that uh, to whatever student uh, is for this row. So that's just going to be index path dot row. So that's going to pull their name out. So with just these two methods uh, and then an array, we can actually run this. And what it'll do is it will list uh, all of my students. So you can see that it's now listing uh, all of the students in this course, which is kind of neat. If you were to click on one, uh, it would show them as selected. Uh, but if you remember the initial video, uh, I want to make a pop-up box uh, that just says, you've clicked on so-and-so. If I want to respond to actions, uh, that's another uh, method that I'll need to override. Uh, that one is, did select row at index path. Did a really nice job of guessing what I wanted there. I was impressed by that. Um, and so when you click on somebody, what I want to happen is I want to actually show um, what used to be called a UI alert view, uh, they're now called UI alert controllers. So I'm going to make a new uh, controller, and I'm just going to make the title be uh, you clicked on, uh, and then I'll just put the name of the student in. So I'll say students uh, index path dot row, uh, and so that finishes up that guy. Uh, the message, I don't need a message. Uh, and then the um, style that I want to display is going to be an alert. Uh, this new uh, UI alert controller, if you happen to know the history, it replaced action sheets and UI alert views, if you happen to know the history on that. We'll also need to add an action. Uh, so we're going to add a UI alert action uh, with a title that just says OK, uh, and it's going to have a style of default, uh, and it's going to have no handler when it gets clicked. And then what we want to do is we just want to present this view controller, uh, AC, animated, sure, um, and I don't really care uh, if there's a completion whenever it's done. Oops, looks like I had a syntax error that I'm going to need to clean up there. 
uh, I was auto completing a bit too quickly it looked like. So what this should do is this should, whenever I click on one of the rows, uh, I should say you clicked on Chris, um, you know, you clicked on another name, uh, so you can click on things and you can see how that works. So I know that that was kind of a whirlwind thing. I just kind of wanted you to see a little bit of, of what does this look like, right? And really what it looks like, it's uh, going over to your story builder, uh, make some changes like graphically to the view, um, then connecting those to your controller. You'll find that Apple does a lot with this model view controller concept. A lot of languages do, but Apple takes it really serious. The thing that we really didn't have much of here is models. Uh, I guess my model would be the counter variable uh, in this example, uh, or my list of students in this example. Those would be my models. And then these controllers connected it to the view. All right, so hopefully you kind of got a, a crash course whirlwind, uh, what kind of things need to happen to build an iOS app. To be honest, I think it's pretty neat that with, I mean, maybe 40 actual lines of code here, uh, we've made an app that actually does something and, like, does a lot of things, right? So if you compare this to, like, uh, web development or something like that, if you wanted to make something like this uh, with web development, it would take you so much time and effort and energy. Uh, but with all the tools and frameworks that are built in with iOS, you can actually get these things together uh, pretty quickly. All right, so that's up for the that's it for the demo. Uh, we'll talk some more about me and other things I've done with iOS.